almost six years after the recession. We find ourselves in a state of counting every last dime and penny. I've lived in the neighborhood for 14 years, so uh, I definitely have seen a lot of changes. I don't have as much disposable income as I used to. Uh, I've also gone through a period of unemployment in the last several years. So, uh, and starting back from that, it was just it's just very difficult. So I think I'm like many people in the neighborhood who uh, has kind of seen flat. You know, our salaries have been flat, and I'm in my condo by the skin of my teeth. I've had to really work with the lender to uh, keep me there because I, I don't have as much disposable income as I used to and my salary has been flat for the last four years. Yet others seem to be perfectly fine on their own and in some eyes in a luxurious state of financial well-being. Well, I mean, for starters, I know where my next meal is coming from, so that puts me one up on most people on the on the planet. But also, you know, I'm not in significant debt. Uh, my student loans are all good. I'm, you know, I'm I'm in pretty good shape, even compared to people I know who've lived comfortable middle class existences as well, right? So, okay. I'd say I'm comfortable. Even with this frivolous expenditure, we, as a nation, still find it impossible to make a donation that is measly in comparison. That is to donate to the homeless. I think what we're seeing from the financial downturn is that there's probably a lot more homelessness, there's a lot more transiency, so you see a lot more people out just kind of with a cup asking for money, and you literally can't help everybody. Well, I think it's a personal decision, but I would say that I tend to give my money to organizations that can distribute it from there rather than to individuals. With, the, with a person on the street, some people are con artists and that's lame and you have to sort of just sniff that out and see oh this is a person genuinely in need versus this is someone who's a huckster. Likewise with organizations sometimes a lot of the money goes to administrative costs or your time's not well spent. There's that old economic problem about uh, the guy donates an hour of his time but in that hour he could raise enough money at his job to donate eight hours worth of stuff but will he actually so it's kind of complicated right like it's it's not as simple as just saying it's always better to give a guy a quarter or it's always better to donate your time it's just about getting involved in a way that you think actually makes an impact you know i remember reading a study that you know kind of middle class and uh working class people actually donate to charity more than people who are wealthy and 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 well off so i, I think that people actually do give to charities when when they can i definitely do I did work with one organization out here called the Urban Art Retreat. Uh, they're over in North Lawndale, and they provide arts education to kids in that. It's, it's a pretty rough neighborhood, right? Like, it's kind of flanked by three gang territories, and it's just not, not so great. So arts education, just a safe place to hang out after school for kids in that neighborhood. I worked there for a little while. That's definitely good. Uh, that help, I, I am very certain that that organization has helped people from becoming homeless in the first place. Anytime. I mean, even if it's not money. It's just time. I've been homeless for about a year. Come on. Hi, hon. Want to help the homeless? Oh, yeah. Come back. This is what I do. I sell streetwise, but I don't have any papers. I appreciate it. And I'm hungry. And that's about it. I don't know what to say. You know, I've been working with streetwise for about um, 19 years. Yeah, they was first down here. Uh, uh, 13th. Yeah, so. And if we cannot donate, should we really just ignore the homeless? Like they are nuances in our daily lives? Obviously you can't give every, you can't feed everybody, you personally, right? There's, there's, it's impractical, it wouldn't actually be a solution anyway. Uh, you know, ignoring the problem, definitely not okay, even though, you know, it can be like, oh, I'm one person, what can I do, right? But there are things you can do. So I don't think it's something you can ignore. I think it's fine. It's like a sales pitch, right? You don't have to stop and listen to everyone's sales pitch. I do feel like you, you can't, you can't help everybody. Um, you can't stop for everybody. But on a basic level, yeah, I do think that you should kind of acknowledge that it's another human being. But, you know, we, I don't judge people who, who don't stop either. Um, I think we all kind of are on our own journey and we do what we can. I feel like organizations should be trying to solve the problem. Okay. Uh, all of that. And as far as an individual person, I find that, like, if I, again, if I have a good vibe and I have some cash on me, then that you can make a person's day or make sure they eat that night. And even if you don't or you don't feel good about it, just treating them like a person and looking them in the eye 
you know, goes a long way. Uh, you know, just being willing to shake somebody's hand can make a bigger difference than, than you might expect. So, so ignoring is never the correct solution. You know, whether, whether you feel like an individual opportunity is not the right one, that's fine. That's for, your, that's for you. You know, your, your, uh, that's your choice to make. Uh, although, you know, of course, a lot of people make the choice that it's just, oh, well, it's never for me or, or someone else is taking care of it. You got to do something. But, you know, you got to do something. Be good to yourself.